Radio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Friday, May 14th. <laughs> Glad you're with us. And out of the corner of my eye, I see Mike Osterhage over there. He's mm -hmm. filling in today. And so it feels more like it should be like 5 a.m. Right, or 4.30. Than, than, yeah. than almost 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. But we are glad you're with us. Listen to this story. This is going to give you a little bit of anxiety if you play lottery quite yes. often. Yeah, so this woman in California, she says that her 26 million lottery ticket was destroyed in the laundry. Mm -hmm. The winning Super Lotto Plus ticket for November 14th was sold at a gas station in the L.A. suburb of Norwalk. Thursday was the last day to redeem it. So a store employee, Esperanza, Esperanza Hernandez, told the Whitler Daily News that a woman came in Wednesday and told workers that she had put the ticket in her pants and it was destroyed in the laundry. Store's manager told, told KTLA TV that surveillance video actually showed the woman who bought the ticket and she's known to store workers. A copy of the surveillance video was turned over to California lottery officials. So here is the thing right now. The claim will be investigated and that's according to a lottery spokeswoman. Lottery officials say someone who believes he or she is the winner must complete a claim form, but someone, if they lose it, they must provide evidence that they owned it, such as a photograph of the front and back of the tickets. So right, that $26 million prize can be taken in annual installments. And right now, if it's not claimed, then $19.7 million will go to California public schools. Mm -hmm. So it's sounding like that is likely. Mm -hmm. The store that sold the ticket will still get a $130,000 bonus. It's fairly uncommon for large jackpots to go unclaimed like this, but it has happened in the past. But can you imagine being that woman? $26 million right there in your grasp? <laughs> sort of. And don't they say take a picture of your ticket and then like put it in a safe or something? Yeah. Oh, yes, safe, before, just in for case. For safekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> or if anything, check your pockets before you throw them in the laundry, well, you, right? You could do that too. Yeah. Again, it, a little bit of both. Yeah. Again, it's weird. It's Mike, weird seeing Mike, Mike there. over there. We'll but, talk to him later. But it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Here's today's 9 at 9. The death toll from Israeli airstrikes has climbed to 119, including 31 children. People near the Gaza border are evacuating and sheltering as tanks come in to destroy underground tunnels that could be used for ground attacks. People have gotten both doses of the coronavirus vaccine no longer need to wear masks. That's the latest guidance from the CDC. States across the country have been quick to loosen restrictions after that announcement on Thursday, like Nevada, Illinois, and Washington. 26 states are now fully reopened. Disney says it's no longer doing temperature checks and is changing six feet social distancing to three. They'll continue to require masks at parks and urge vaccinations. A Texas bill that would ban abortion at six weeks is headed to Governor Abbott's desk today. Abbott has said he plans to sign it into law and it would go into effect later this year. Another controversial bill that would ban gender affirming health care for transgender children missed yesterday's deadline for House consideration. But a similar Senate bill can still be considered as early as today. Lawmakers are still deciding who will replace Representative Liz Cheney. Representative Elise Stefanik is expected to be voted in today. Unemployment dropped to 473,000 last week, lowest in more than a year, but nearly 17 million Americans are still getting some sort of state or federal help. The Mega Millions jackpot now at $430 million. You have a better chance of just about everything else in the universe, including being admitted to the emergency room with a pogo stick related injury. And that's today's Nine at Nine. You like your chances there of winning the lotto? Eh, not really, but we got <laughs> credit where credit is yes. due. David Sears walked in after we did our talker about the woman who washed her $26 million lottery ticket in the laundry. Okay, so the second one you said that that's some clean cash, clean right? Cash. And then it brought new meaning to money laundering? New meaning to money laundering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like that one. That's good really stuff. good. On a Friday morning. <laughs> on a Friday morning. Outside with live cam. And uh, again, as we what, said. What's more frustrating? What? If you washed the ticket or if you played the same numbers all the time and didn't buy it. Or is it the same? Oh, God. Because you, you literally had the money in your in your hand. Right. So yeah. Well, you play the same numbers fairly yeah. often. So now what I'm wondering is because they say that you, you know, you had to take a picture. Who takes a picture of your lottery ticket? But would you go look at here's my play slip. I use this all the time. You could check records. I'm always buying these numbers. Mm. Yeah. You know, 
I, I don't know, because when we do those lotto pools every once in a while when it's huge, yeah. we always take a picture of our tickets. Well, that's so there's everybody multiple else people. Yeah. knows what the numbers are, so yeah. somebody can't go, nope, didn't win. <laughs> 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 that's to keep everybody honest yeah. in the newsroom. Well, so. <laughs> Mike, as we were saying earlier, you're in for Justin yep. today. It's yep. good to have you here, even Thank though you. it's 9.03 in the morning. I know, yeah. it, is, it is a little bit uh, strange. Justin's going to be in later on today, so we've got everything all kind of messed up. Hey, it's another beautiful day. This is kind of the last of the... Uh, the, the nice, pleasant days because, you know, you look at that bottom number, the dew points at 60 right now, so that's still comfortable. We're at 68 degrees, and we had a little more sunshine earlier today, but uh, you know, got some of those mid-high clouds in there. Going for 79 for a high temperature today, and of course, that's very dependent upon if, you know, we get a nice little hole in that veiled sunshine. May go up a little bit more. The aquifer did go up a tenth of a foot. Um, by this time next week, I'm suspecting that number is going to be going up by leaps and bounds, given the amount of rain in the forecast. Mold and grass are both on the low side. Over the next, say, five, seven days, we are looking at uh, two, three, four, five inches of rain, really, depending on where you are. And we've got rain starting really tomorrow afternoon and going on through at least the middle to latter part of next week. So today, like I said, last of the really nice days. Now the humidity comes back overnight tonight. I think we see a couple of sprinkles in the morning, then a few afternoon showers and thunderstorms here and there. Some could get a little strong Sunday. More storms around here. We may see some heavy downpours as well. And then going into next week, more rain, severe storms. The day we're really going to have to watch out for severe storms is going to be Monday, Monday late in the evening hours, and also some heavy downpours even uh, Tuesday into Wednesday. We'll get all the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Anxious to hear more. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, bright sunshine out there. The roads are dry. Traffic looks great right now at Loop 1604 and Houseman. And new at 9, the Department of Health and Human Services is shutting down the migrant shelter at the Freeman Coliseum along with another site in Dallas. The emergency sites house children who cross the U.S.-Mexico border alone and were set up back in March. Uh, DHHS told CNN they've seen a drop in the number of kids found at border facilities. The shelters were only temporary. Now their leases are set to expire. The San Antonio site will close May 30th and the Dallas site will close on June 2nd. The Department of Health and Human Services says they are working to unite the children with families or sponsors. Other top stories we're following for you this Friday. A man gets shot after deputies say he broke into the home of his ex-girlfriend at 4 this morning. Now he's recovering from a gunshot wound and facing charges of aggravated assault. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the man had a gun when he got inside a home on Real Road. That's just north of Rigsby Avenue on East Bear County. Investigators tell us he then got into an argument with his ex. At some point, the woman's father intervened and shot the man in either the face or the head. The man was taken to a hospital and at last check is in stable condition. We still don't know if the woman's father will face any charges in this case. Now to the vaccine rollout here in Bear County. Now that the FDA and CDC recommended, recommended Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds. A free vaccination clinic for teens taking place tomorrow. It's happening at Sol Ross Middle School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That address is at 3630 Callahan Road. You can register online by visiting the website on your screen, very bottom. That's uh, book.novel or novelhealth.com. AI slash nursing. And walk ups are also available, but only people who pre register are guaranteed to get a vaccine. Pfizer's vaccine also available for kids 12 and older in other parts of the city. Right now, KSAT.com, we have a list of all the places you can take your teen to get the shot. You can also find it right there on our homepage. In your morning headlines, a Lyft driver picked up more than just your ordinary customer and an update on that elderly man attacked in California earlier this week. A hero DPS trooper saves a driver's life south of San Antonio and a lucky little feline. We say Friday morning. Good morning to David Sears. How many lives does a cat really have? Well, we officially nine. nine. Can they use more than one at one time? Ah, that's a good question. What are the rules here? I, I think you're allowed. I don't know. We'll find, we'll find out. <laughs> okay. Got that for you just a second. First, you're in the car with a Lyft driver, and yes, that is a guy with a gun in the back seat. No, he's not a customer, just a guy committing a crime. The driver had just finished washing the car, was waiting for his next ride when the guy slid into the back seat. Shortly after he got into the car, the suspect got violent. He stole 67 year old Paul Liao's phone and then popped him in the face a couple of times with his gun, and then 
He steals $1,500 from Liao, money he had earned at another job. The guy tried to steal the car, but that didn't work since Liao told him he wasn't going to be able to drive it. I say my, my car is a new system. They don't have a key. You cannot drive it. You cannot move. We are seeing an uptick in uh, all crimes of all sorts, but uh, violent crime is on the rise uh, throughout the state. Yeah, Liao did, ask, did say that the guy asked him if he was from China. He's actually Taiwanese. The sheriff is looking to see if this will be elder abuse and or a hate crime. Remember this disturbing video we showed you earlier in the week? A couple of teenagers attacking an 80 year old man right on the street of the neighborhood just south of Oakland in San Leandro. Yeah, this is home security video. Uh, the two stole his Fitbit, slapped him around a little bit. We got an update for you. Those two have been arrested, but wait till you hear this one. The youngest of the two, only 11. And he was the one driving the stolen car. The car was actually stolen during a carjacking. The other suspect is 17. They were arrested Wednesday, according to the local police. Those two are also being investigated in connection with other crimes. They are still not sure if this is a hate crime or not. And now you're looking at an overturned truck on Highway 281. This is just outside Edinburgh. Inside, 22-year-old Abdullah Avala who was unconscious. Even worse, the truck started to burn. And that's when DPS trooper Armando Martinez got to the scene and didn't waste any time trying to save Avila's life. After calling out to him, he realized that he was out. But the flames were getting hotter, and he had to do something. My only thought was to get Mr. Avila out. As he was gaining consciousness and the fire was impacting him directly, you can hear the pain that he was going through. And I was not going to let him stay in that vehicle. Now, while Trooper Martinez was trying to get Avila out of the truck, another trooper actually arrived on the scene to help him out. And you can see more smoke and flames. Avila transported to a hospital here in San Antonio to recover, while Trooper Martinez being hailed as a hero. And finally this morning, if a cat jumps out of a window five stories up, does he use more than one life? Did you see that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. A cat leaping out of that window of a building in Chicago. He's leaping out because the building was on fire. The amazing part, he bounces off the grass and then just goes on his merry way. You notice the cat is black, so which begs another question. If a black cat is that lucky, can it cross your path or can you cross its path? Not okay? sure, but we checked with the replay booth in New York, uh, David, yeah. and that counts as 1.5. One and and a, okay, <laughs> one and a half. 1.5, yes. Yeah. Well you spent. Take that. So. <laughs> Thank you, David. All right, see you in a few minutes. Yes, sir. 910, about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The San Antonio Hotel was named one of the best in the U.S. by TripAdvisor. Erica Hernandez has this and more stories you may have missed this week on KSAT.com. Local family who lost their daughter to brain cancer decided to turn their tragedy into an amazing cause aimed at helping families in our community. How you can help Gabriella's Smile Foundation raise money for research. A new under the water, a new under the water exhibit has made its way to San Antonio. So hold your breath because just ahead on GMSA at nine, all the underwater fun you can explore with your kids this weekend. And we're excited about that, Alicia. Also, the Dow is up 261 points. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 914. The Duzian wants you to join them under the sea. Their new interactive exhibit, Voyage to the Deep, is based off the fictional book, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, written by the French author Jules Verne. Alicia Beretta has the tough task today. She's live at the Duzian here in San Antonio, exploring the underwater world of the deep sea. Hey, good morning. Good morning, you guys. Well, this exhibit, as you can imagine, it's been a total hit among the little captains, even little mermaids of the sea. And really, there's something for everyone, adults included, because everywhere you turn, everywhere you touch, there's a treasure of fun and learning. Welcome to the underwater adventure, Voyage to the Deep. It is a really fun, immersive exhibit here at the Duzeum. Do you think your kiddo has what it takes to drive the Nautilus submarine? Well, here, you'll need two people and a lot of imagination. It's based on 20,000 leagues under the sea, so there's a really fun sort of narrative component to it. There's also a lot of STEM aspects to it. Uh, there's a giant slide, there's a kelp forest. It's essentially just a giant submarine the kids can go in and explore and uh, just have a lot of fun. Kids can role play as Captain Nemo, the main character in the science fiction adventure novel, and perform on the organ just like him. 
Um, so there's a really fun pipe organ. Uh, so you can play row, row, row your boat. Um, it makes it a simple way for kids to do it themselves. Um, I think adults have a lot of fun with it as well. Little captains can search for targets of fun with the help of the periscope. Now I see, I see two. Zoom into the blue waters for a closer look at sea critters like a hermit crab or muster up the courage to touch this fellow and see what exactly he's been snacking on. They absolutely love it. They're constantly finding new things. I'll hang out with some kids in there and they might open a drawer and discover something new that I hadn't even seen before. So I think that's really fun. But kids also learn it's not all fun and games. It takes hard work and strength to live underwater. Just look at the struggle to lift these dive boots. Part of navigating the waters includes knowing when to get out. And the kids say the escape hatch is the perfect exit. It's big and immersive, um, but then it also layers on those science elements and that learning. Well, this entire exhibit was actually developed by the Australian Maritime Museum and was translated specifically here into Spanish for the museum. That way it's inclusive for all. And again, there's something for everyone. The museum has done it again. Kids will probably be here for hours. Stephanie, I have a feeling that you'll probably be out here exploring sometime soon. I think so. I was just looking at that thinking Rooney would love it. I love how they keep changing things. So this is something, yeah, we haven't checked out before. Yeah. So it's very cool. Thanks for letting us know about it, Alicia. Absolutely. Right, I want to join it right now. All right, Mike Oster Hage, it is now that time. It's time for to you. To get more on your weekend and next week's forecast because things are about to get really wet around here. Yeah, we've got uh, at least a good five days or more of uh, potentially some heavy rain around here. We're going to start tomorrow, probably tomorrow afternoon, mm -hmm. and then Sunday, and there's chances for severe weather and some heavy downpours too. Plus, we're going to have the cumulative effects of all the rain over the course of some days in the ground. In many cases, is pretty saturated. So, yeah. I mean, I had yes. toadstools popping up in my yard yesterday when I was cutting the grass. So watch that. And also, you were talking earlier, Mark, that you stepped outside and just got inundated with mosquitoes. Well, I think even people that are getting rid of standing water, you can't mm -hmm. get rid of all of it. Yeah. I mean, so we've got, they're just absolutely thick right now. The mosquitoes have just shown up just in the last week. Do your best to try and, you know, all those little you know, dishes, bowls, puddles, anything like that, so it doesn't help to uh, breed the mosquitoes. Anyway, this morning, good morning. What a beautiful start with that uh, sunrise out there. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. And as you can see, it's a, it's a good looking day again. This is, as I've been saying, you know, we've had that nice stretch from since starting Wednesday with just spectacular weather and got these midi, mid and high level clouds out here, sort of that veiled sunshine. And that's going to be the situation throughout most of the day. And this is the cause of it. This water this is the water vapor imagery and this moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere. The darker shade, that's when you have the really vivid blue skies out there. But we have that moisture coming on in here. Still, overall, it's a very nice day. Humidity levels are still pleasant. Temperatures were up to 68 right now. Started off in the low to mid 50s in parts of the hill country. And as you can see, now these numbers, they've crept up just a little bit. We're flirting, you know, there's the, the magic number at 60 there. We're flirting with a bit more humidity. It's still okay. It should drop a little bit in the afternoon and uh, a comfortable afternoon. But then by tonight, here comes the humidity working its way back in here. The wind's gonna be out of the Southeast. And by tomorrow morning, It'll be a different story around here, and I think with the all that moisture coming on in here, we'll have a couple little sprinkles here and there, maybe some mist and drizzle, and then that humidity stays on the high side, and that's going to help to feed some of these showers and thunderstorms. So here's the uh, kind of short-range computer model. Mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today, and then overnight, clouds definitely thicken up. A couple little sprinkly showers or two, and then these showers and thunderstorms are going to get going by even late morning. I think the best opportunity, though, and this doesn't mean everybody's going to be seeing rain, but we'll have those scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms around here. That's going to be the situation into tomorrow evening overnight. And then and even some of those out to the west tomorrow may be on the strong to severe side. There's a very small chance out there. Same thing later on Sunday. We may see a couple of those overnight storm complexes uh, kind of get brewing tomorrow night into Sunday. And then there's the uh, outlook for the severe weather. That would be tomorrow, just the marginal risk, a very low risk, high winds and hail being the biggest threats. And then that's 
going to be the situation on into Sunday as well. But like I said, Monday is the day I think we really have to watch out for the atmosphere. Just looking at some of the numbers right now, the atmosphere is very volatile on Monday. 74 at noon today, partly sunny skies, a lot of that kind of veiled sunshine out there, and then 79 for a high temperature today. Some folks are making it into the low 80s. Tomorrow, some mist and drizzle, sprinkly shower in the morning, and then in the afternoon, some of those thunderstorms. Maybe some heavy downpours on Sunday, uh, Monday, a couple of heavier downpours, but Monday late afternoon and evening, it's uh, things are not looking good as far as the severe threat Monday and then some heavy rain, maybe a couple of stronger storms Tuesday into Wednesday as well. So it's going to be a wet and interesting week next. Week. I mean, we know this is your job, but you, you were truly concerned this morning about what could be happening Monday night. When you look at some of the just looking at the numbers and we were all talking, you know, Justin, and Adam, Katie and Sarah and I were all talking yesterday and we we're all saying, yeah, Monday is not looking good. Mm. So. OK, OK. You say it's not looking good, then it's not looking good. We'll right, we know the team will keep us posted all weekend. 921 right now. And coming up on GMSA Attention Foodies, the Tower of the Americas kicking off Fiesta with an event perfect for all food lovers. Erica Hernandez has details after the break. 925, it was a busy news week and there may have been a few stories you might have missed. Erica Hernandez joining us now to chat a bit more about some stories on our website. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys, well, did you know that San Antonio has one of the top hotels in the country? Heard something about that. Yes. Yeah. Well, just, we cheated because we had a tease oh, earlier. Thanks. <laughs> Jeez, TripAdvisor announced their 2021 Traveler's Choice Awards and Hotel Emma at the Pearl was named one of the best. Hotel Emma features 146 rooms and has become a favorite for many celebrities. In fact, Cher even tweeted that it was one of the best hotels she's ever been to. Only other Texas hotel that was on that list was the Lancaster Hotel in Houston, which came in at number nine. Hotel Emma was number 11. The best hotel windows were determined based on the quality and quantity of traveler reviews and ratings posted on the TripAdvisor website. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. I've never stayed there overnight, but I've gone to like have dinner there. Right. I, I love this just place. Had, it's beautiful. Just had drinks there, and I was the bar, bartenders worked there many years. And I was like, "Is it true that Cher said this is one of our favorite hotels in the world?" And he said, "Yes." And she's an absolute sweetheart. Oh, Aww. that's cool to well, hear. Yeah. I, don't know if, I feel like I have to go stay there, but it'd be a good staycation. It yeah. would be just a little on the pricey yeah, side. Yes, so we'd, 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 we'd all have to pitch in <laughs> and have like a little Let's party. Let's have our piggy bank and <laughs> <Yeah>. start saving. <laughs> Next up, the Spurs and Bear Goods Company are once again teaming up for a collection. The new line will feature the team's famous Fiesta color scheme and includes apparel and leather goods like wallets, bags, and keychains. The line will go on sale this Sunday during Fan Appreciation Night at the game. On Monday, fan can then buy the items online or reserve for pickup at Outland Provisions located at 2202 Broadway. We have photos up now of some of the products. And Mark, let me know, would this be a good Father's Day gift maybe? Oh, that's Absolutely. a great idea. This, this has been, been, the Fiesta theme products have been one of the best things about this season. Oh, I yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's been an up and down season, but I'm yep. loving the colors. I'm loving this, the, the look. And yeah, you might have to get one of those for dad. Yeah, thanks for the ideas. There mm -hmm. you go. And finally, let's talk Fiesta, a newly announced foodie event that will take place at the Tower of the Americas. A Taste of the Tower will be on June 17th from 7 to 10 p.m. Attendees can enjoy drinks, live music from local bands, and a lot of food samples from some of SA's premier restaurants. Now, VIP ticket holders will be granted access to a private area with views of the fireworks from Fiesta Fiesta, which will be taking place the same day at Hemisphere. Pre-sale tickets are now for sale. They are $50 and $25 for kids ages 4 to 13. Those VIP tickets are $75. Tickets can be purchased online. Now, this is a family-friendly event, and there will be activities for the kiddos, Fiesta, June, food. Sounds like a win-win cool. situation. Best part, rather than this is canceled and that's canceled, now it's a, here's, an event. here's an event. Yay! Yeah. Everywhere is an event. We like that. I like that. And yeah. uh, fireworks, right? You yeah, at the end of Fiesta Fiesta, they'll have fireworks at the end, and you can see them inside the tower. Awesome. Very cool. So it's a good, it sounds like a fun event. I Thank you, so. ma'am. Thank you. 928 on your Friday morning, still ahead. And the Spurs clinched the play-in tournament, but not because they won, because the Kings lost. <laughs> David and RJ join us to discuss. That is coming up. Losing a child is every parent's worst nightmare. One that came true for a San Antonio family after their daughter was diagnosed with a brain tumor. How they're using their experiences to help other families and children battling brain cancer. Coming up on GMSA. 
And welcome back. It's 931. In 2021, there's already been an estimated 24,000 new cases of brain cancer across the country. The National Cancer Institute says that more than 11% of these cases are people under the age of 20. A local family lost their daughter to brain cancer and decided to turn their tragedy into an amazing cause aimed at helping families in our community. Our Max Massey tells us more about Gabriella's Smile Foundation. It's a very difficult, um, difficult journey, but one that we are, um, you know, just looking forward to to making a difference in, in another family's life. Gabriella's Smile Foundation was created on March 30th, 2016. It was in honor of Cecilio and Isabella's six-year-old daughter, Gabriella. The first day they told us she looks like she has a brainstem tumor. And then the following day, they told us that she did, in fact, have this uh, cancer called DIPG. Uh, and they did tell us that she likely would not survive the year. And they gave us a very grim terminal prognosis. They told, they told us she'd probably live about 8 to 12 months. No parent ever wants to hear the words, your child has incurable brain cancer. She battled for about almost eight months a terminal form of brain cancer. Uh, it's a tumor uh, referred to as commonly referred to as DIPG, and it stands for diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. It's just a fancy word for a brainstem glioma, a very bad brainstem glioma tumor. Gabriella passed away November 7th, 2015. I think one of the major takeaways that, that occurred with us during Gabriella's journey was how important community was. Now, the Torres family and Gabriella's Smile Foundation wants to make a difference. We provide um, financial assistance for families. So that's one of the big things we do. To date, we've helped over 86 families with more than $58,000 in just that program alone. It's not just financial assistance either. Gabriella's Smile Foundation also has Operation Back to School, serving over 1,080 children with backpacks and delivering those backpacks to oncology clinics in local children's hospitals. Just really um, be a champion for children uh, that are battling cancer in, um, in, in San Antonio. And an effort to raise money to help local families fight pediatric cancer and an effort to help raise money for research. There is a special event this weekend. Gabriella's 5K cupcake run. Gabriella's favorite dessert or favorite thing to eat was cupcakes. <laughs> and so we thought, what better way to honor her, but make it fun as well for, for, for people participating um, than to do a cupcake run. If you are a family or if you know a family in need of help, you can apply for a grant from Gabriella's Smile Foundation. We have a link to do so right now on ksat.com. And you can use the grant money at your discretion, medical expenses, travel expenses, treatments, bills, and even other living expenses as you see fit. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And Gabriella's 5K cupcake run is happening tomorrow. That's tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. You can participate in person or virtually. We have everything you need to know right now on our website at KSAT.com. Outside with live cam, Mike Ostrage in for Justin. Uh, at this hour, it looks pretty good out there right now. Whoever was doing a rain dance, <laughs> Wow. Stop. stop. <laughs> you know, and, and again, we had always been saying we're not going to complain, you know, about the rain. We were really begging for it, what, three weeks ago, and we've been getting, you know, a lot of it. It's been wonderful, but uh, yeah, you're going to be maybe wanting the faucets to get turned off by the time the uh, middle part of this upcoming week rolls in here. As far as temperatures around the area right now, everybody is sitting nice and pretty, basically in the, uh, the 60s, and we had some 50s starting off earlier this morning. San Antonio right now is at 68 degrees and then you go a little bit further off to the west and as you can see that we've got some of these readings that are also in the 70s already in Del Rio as well as in uh, Carrizo Springs and we're going to stay around the upper 70s say low 80s later on today got a lot of veiled sunshine out there if you will some of those mid high level clouds will be sticking around enough sunshine still a nice day humidity is still okay it's been creeping up a little bit, but it's really going to come back in here tomorrow or overnight by tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, the rain starts and uh, we can see a lot of it. We're going to show you what some of the projections are for the amount of rain and some of the uh, severe threats as well. Thank you, Mike. And you guys were talking about a rain dance. How about a Spurs dance, right? The Spurs are officially in the play-in tournament, but they needed a lot of help to get there. They sure did. Spurs fall in the Big Apple to the Knicks, but get an assist from Memphis. David and RJ here to talk about that. And also, yeah. uh, Tim Duncan mm -hmm. headed into the yeah. Naismith mm -hmm. NBA Hall of Fame. 
big yeah. weekend. So, Steph, where's your uh, where's your victory dance? <laughs> well, not a rain dance, it's like to, a... to keep bringing them luck. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, you know how someone did a rain dance and we had like yeah. lots of days of yeah. rain, and I want someone to do a Spurs dance so we can have oh. lots of wins. That's, well, I a you win do, would a, be yeah, just good. one victory dance. Would oh be gosh, good. we'll take we'll take that. They played the Knicks last night. Ooh, yeah, but let's not look back. Let's look ahead. That's right, David. <laughs> Focus on the positive here, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We're in the play-in tournament. We they're did the it. Yeah. They're, they're in the 10th spot in the play-in tournament. Mm -hmm. They don't know who they're going to play. they got two games left, that I can guarantee you, knowing the Spurs, the way we know the Spurs, there's a lot of guys going to be sitting on these next two games. Oh, yeah. They, can rest. they hadn't had any rest since the second half of the season started, so they're going to get a lot of rest over the next couple of days, and that's exactly what they need. They, beat, they lost to the Knicks mm -hmm. last night, but the Kings lost. They, they think, you talk about blowing it. The Kings were up with three <laughs> minutes left. They were up like 110 yeah. to 104. And Memphis went on a big run. But anyway, we're talking yeah. about the future now. Yes, I'm even going to look, I'm even going to double down on that prediction, David, because my guess is that uh, the game tomorrow is at 1 p.m. We have Tim Duncan's things later. Pop is going to just get himself ejected so he could get on a plane to go to <laughs> <laughs> Tim Duncan's. Sounds, sounds about right. We're going to find all sorts of creative ways to figure out which Spurs players are even going to play over the next two games. Because, again, the Spurs locked into that 10th spot. Uh, we still do not know who they're going to play, though. They're either going to nope. play Memphis or Golden State. I think we're we got still the, fighting we got the for standings. Those, uh, we can, yeah. Uh, yeah, see, yeah. you look at that, and you got mm -hmm. uh, the Grizzlies and the Warriors are tied. Mm -hmm. So I think they don't play each other until the last game. So they could actually be playing for the spot of uh, the the uh, ninth yeah. spot or the eighth yeah. spot when they play on Sunday each other so right. we'll see how that shapes up and so. and the way it works again real quick is that yeah, seven will play eight and uh -huh. then nine will play ten mm -hmm. the loser of seven and eight will play the winner of nine and ten so if the Spurs do win that first game they would still have to win another game just to get into the first round of the playoffs so two road games Got to get it done. Uh, unfortunately, last night I would have wanted them to win that game because it would have actually given them some momentum. We don't even know yeah. who's going to be on the who's going to play this weekend, so they may go into this thing with four straight losses. They don't have the season series against either the Gold State team or Memphis, so they're going to have to spend a lot of time over the next what three or four days mm -hmm. studying some film and getting ready. So, yeah. and in the meantime, they're going to play Phoenix, get done with that, as he said, and then they're going to watch the uh, the history take place tomorrow <laughs> yeah, evening when Tim Duncan goes into the Basketball right. Hall of Fame. Yeah, the days when uh, when we weren't worried about getting into uh, the play-in <laughs> tournaments, <laughs> when Tim Duncan was oh, here, 19-year uh, uh, career, uh, just an amazing, amazing uh, player, person that the Spurs, you know, did so much for the city and for the franchise itself. Five championships over three decades. Incredible. So, Mark and Steph, y'all have been here for pretty much the entire run. Yes, so, sir. Um, we've always talked about Tim and some of our great moments some of our great memories of Tim Duncan yes. mm -hmm. share, share um, with us. I, I like the well the first one for me I guess uh, 99 when he was standing next to David Robinson mm -hmm. I I was telling David earlier I have that newspaper clipping yeah. somewhere wow. but I just remembered like yep. even back then I was like wow this is big it was it was pretty cool and then I also like the fact that he went back to St. Croix and helped out everybody there during the one of the toughest times you a know in that amen, area amen mm -hmm. to all that one mm -hmm. of the things I love about our guys I always love our team's humility mm -hmm. uh, they're just we just talk about they're good guys Tim Duncan to me is the greatest power forward of all time and he will mm -hmm. never tell you that out loud mm -hmm. and that speaks volumes but I think about Tim Duncan I think you're right yeah with him there, there's 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 so many and, <laughs> yeah. uh, I know it's I'm kind of at a so loss many moments yeah, so many right. different and, things. And, and and the fact that we've been here for the entire time I mean you know you talk about being fortunate I was fortunate because I watched David Robinson's entire career mm -hmm. yeah I watched I watched the end of George Gervin's career so the Spurs have three Hall of Famers mm -hmm. right yeah Gervin Robinson and now Tim Duncan so right. I, I saw the end of George Gervin's career here and then when he got traded to Chicago all of David Robinson's career all of Tim Duncan's career so how lucky am I to be able to, to see all that the, the six championships yeah. that they went to the five that they won that's special just yeah. going along that journey with Tim Duncan and, mm -hmm. and being able to you know see him in the locker room and and listen to him and talk to him every now and then when he wanted to talk to the media <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah when he was willing to, to was give willing. a couple of minutes of his time he was just um, a quiet guy he, yeah. he, he was he was just quiet he was a great leader and he led by a example yeah. not by words what do you well think he was name? definitely sort of the embodiment embodiment of san antonio mm -hmm. and really mm -hmm. part of the culture here and so i i think about 2014 that's the one that i was here for i was not here for any of the other championships but to be able to come back after that brutal loss to Ooh. the heat in 2013 
Yeah. And Tim was so emotional after that win. There were some shots that ABC had of him on the court with his kids where he was just tearing up. And yep. you could see just a, a lot of emotions going through him. So tomorrow, 530 is the actual ceremony. It's going to be on ESPN. So. Yay, going in with Kobe. Tim. Yeah, Kobe yeah. and Kevin Garnett. So it's Kobe and Kevin point. Garnett going in with Tim Duncan. Fantastic. So and David's going to be there tomorrow night. David Robinson, right? He's, he's presenting him. He's yeah, presenting there we go. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, good. guys. Uh, good memories, right? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we could talk about it for 21 years, I promise. <laughs> 942, about 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Get vaccinated and you could win a million bucks. And a major crack causes an engineering crackdown and shuts down a major U.S. bridge. That's coming up in today's Take a Look at This. 945, remember we were talking about this the other day. You get vaccinated, maybe get rich. It's a new opportunity that has officials in Ohio uh, using as an incentive to improve vaccination rates. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Hey, Ohioans, get vaccinated and you could win a million bucks. It's true. Governor Mike DeWine has announced a unique statewide lottery program to encourage Ohioans to get their COVID-19 shots. For five weeks, lucky vaccinated residents 18 or older will be chosen at random to win a million dollars a week. Those under 18 aren't left out. They're eligible to win a four-year full-ride state school scholarship. It's kind of mind-blowing. I was astonished. <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking. That Mike DeWine, he's crazy. Uh, his words, not mine. But the real craziness, DeWine says, is further risk of life when vaccines are readily available. He's hoping when folks look at the incentive program that way, the chance to make dollars will make sense. It's a great opportunity for people not only to get vaccinated, but to make money. It's actually pretty cool. Further south, the news was not as enriching as a startling discovery led officials to shut down a major bridge in Tennessee. But we need to get people off the bridge as soon as possible. A massive crack was found in the I-40 Hernando de Soto Bridge in Memphis during a routine inspection. Inspectors wasted no time shutting the bridge down immediately. The crackdown, due to the crack found, detoured both road and river traffic, causing major transportation disruptions. I-40 is a major east-west roadway, and local reports say more than 50,000 Mike, know, you were we, just talking about that we, bridge. Yeah, uh, Mike joins us now. Before he worked in San Antonio, he was actually a TV guy in mm -hmm. Memphis. And you say this, what would this equate to here in San Antonio? Uh, shutting down I-35 and I-10 at the same time? Oh, gosh, probably. I mean, it's uh, you've a got, very wow. big deal. Yeah, you, but there is another access, uh, I-55, mm -hmm. which is kind of the older bridge south of there on the Mississippi River goes across into Arkansas mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but the, the biggest problem there is the fact that then barge traffic is shut down yeah, because, I mean, you, you see those giant barges going up and down the Mississippi all the mm -hmm. time. Testament to the um, the backup systems on the bridge that something like that broke and, and it didn't fall. But, I mean, we just drove over that bridge at Christmas wow. going to visit uh, my in-laws at Christmas time. Thank, so. thank goodness wow. for that inspection. And, and no timeline yeah. for this right now. As they I heard this morning they said months. Months. Wow. Because when you think of it, because that's like, the big major mm -hmm. beam on that thing. It's like, geez. So. Well, as we circle back to weather, uh, the weather bears watching not only this weekend, but certainly into the early part of next week. Yeah, uh, we're looking at a whole bunch of rain. You know, we've had plenty of it the past uh, couple of weeks and the systems that have moved through here. And, you know, even just the other night, we had those heavy, heavy downpours. And we're looking at that over the course of about four or five days. First of all, start off this morning, some clouds out there. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. That nice orange glow. It's not cool. It almost looks like a painting. And then everything's nice and green out there. Um, hope you've had a chance to cut the grass while the humidity has been down or do it today because, well, maybe you can sneak it in tomorrow. There are going to be a couple of sprinkles in the morning, but then more showers and thunderstorms are going to be popping up in the afternoon. It looked a little prettier earlier this morning, but a lot of this mid and high level moisture has moved on in here. And humidity, like I said, right now is pretty good. Dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere. There's the uh, magic number of 60, and we're going to be well up there, upper 60s, low 70s and all that moisture and we always keep saying you know if we're going to have humidity let's get it squeezed out well it's going to get squeezed out definitely the sponge is full and it's going to keep getting wrung out and wrung out each and every day starting late tomorrow going through next week 
different computer model, longer range model. And this one uh, we do have now it tends to you know kind of broad brush everything doesn't mean it's going to be raining constantly, but we'll start to see some of those showers developing late in the morning and then by the afternoon, maybe even a couple of uh, heavier downpours and a few uh, thunderstorms, especially further to the west. And that's going to be tomorrow uh, throughout the evening hours. Then tomorrow night into Sunday, sometimes we get and I just described they've got a you know 25 cent name, $5 name to them, but uh, the nighttime storm complexes, they, they create almost their own weather. There's the th chance that one of those could be developing and moving in here overnight tomorrow night into Sunday morning. They pack a punch. They usually die off right around the time the sun comes up. Then throughout the afternoon and into the evening, more showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. Monday, kind of a lull in the action, if you will, first part of the day. And then by the evening hours, and even though this doesn't have the, the yellows and the reds on here, that's when the atmosphere is very, very volatile is the best way to put it. And we're looking at a good chance for very strong, severe storms Monday night. Then Tuesday, we get more of those heavy pockets of rain moving in overnight into Wednesday morning. And then and even another kind of secondary punch of that coming in here on Wednesday. And as far as rainfall totals, I mean, again, we're looking at perhaps about uh, anywhere from three to five inches of rain. A lot of it, of course, in the recharge zone. That's fantastic news, but uh, there's going to be too much in some places. And then the small risk for uh, some severe storms, the marginal risk tomorrow night as well as Sunday. But this is going to be interesting to see what Storm Prediction Center is going to say about Monday when that finally comes into focus because they only go three days out. All right, today, 74 at noon, partly sunny skies, a lot of that mid high level cloudiness out there. And then later on today, 79 for a high temperature, some low 80s out there as well. And then we go into tomorrow, mist, drizzle, you know, a little sprinkly shower, I think in the morning, a lot of humidity. And then a few showers and thunderstorms around. Some could be, you know, packing a punch. Same thing on Sunday. We'll have to watch out for heavy downpours on Sunday. Monday, the biggest severe threat right now in the evening hours and some heavy pockets of rain Tuesday, Wednesday. Thank you, Mike. 951, 73 degrees. And a snorkeler in Australia spotted a fish with a wedding ring wrapped around its body. Still ahead, how she was able to find the potential owner of that ring. Welcome back on your Friday. Okay, so we're gonna wrap things up. Interesting story out of Australia. Yeah, this is where the snorkeler found that wedding ring and it was stuck on the fish. There's a picture right there. <laughs> That's legit. <laughs> yeah, the snorkeler recently shared an unusual discovery she made during a recent underwater trip. Not uncommon to see fish with uh, various types of uh, garbage stuck around mm -hmm. their necks. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until, uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, she was snorkeling in Emily Bay, which is located on an island on the eastern coast of Australia. Uh, so yeah, I came across the sand mullet, and am I saying that right? And mm -hmm. had the gold ring stuck around its neck. So word got out, then she heard about a guy that had lost his wedding ring. And uh, so it wasn't until she returned to land, mm -hmm. she remembered the post on the community page. Apparently the man had lost his ring in that same area. Mm -hmm. mm. So she was able to get in touch with the man and they both believe that it's likely that this fish is swimming around with the man's missing wedding ring. Now she is willing to try and relocate the fish and along with a group of fishermen attempt to catch it with a net. Wow. I hope so. Yeah. So good luck there. There's a sushi joke in there. Something. Oh, Mike. Have a great weekend. <laughs>